are some cable news shows that are almost purely entertainment. Uh, talk shows that only bring on one side, um, you know, ranting and raving about made up controversies. And of course, I'm talking about Fox when I say that. Uh, there are cable news shows that interview newsmakers and world leaders. Do you think CNN does that too? Uh, well, what shows are you talking about? Um, I think at, at times you, you do have some very opinion based shows at nighttime, like you do on Fox. So, which ones? Welcome back, and thanks for joining once again as we try to make some sense of this constant gaslighting that has become the norm over the last few years and is increasingly in your face. One of the worst offenders, in my opinion, is Brian the Tater Stelter, who has hilariously been given the title Chief Media Correspondent and Anchor of Reliable Sources. This guy is no correspondent or anchor of anything reliable. There are countless, endless daily examples of why this is the case, but we're not going to to focus on that today. Today, we're going to look at an interview that Tater recently did with the 16 year old kid with a news focused YouTube channel called Raving Ryan. Nice name. So during the interview, Tater starts off with his usual stick of attacking his business competition over at Fox News. When this young journalist calls him out for his obvious hypocrisy on these matters. Before we get into this interview, give me just 30 seconds to tell you about this special offer for my subscribers. Collagen makes your skin healthy and gives you a youthful look. It strengthens nails, hair, teeth, and gut health maintains muscle, improves joints, and so much more. Get yourself a bag of Ageless Multi Collagen. I highly recommend it. As an added bonus, if you order today, they'll give you free shipping, free VIP live health and fitness coaching for life, and a free e-report on the 14 foods for amazing skin. If you order today, you can save up to 51% off Ageless Multi Collagen. And rest assured knowing this company offers a 60 day money back guarantee, even on empty bags. Go to www.healthwithdronetech.com and order today. Or click the link in the description or pinned comment. I'm sure the show was very different in 2013 than it is now um, in the age of Donald Trump. How has the show changed since Donald Trump became president? We're living through uh, a, a crisis presidency. Um, the leader of the free world wants to destroy news outlets, uh, leads a hate movement against the media. And, and that, is, that is an overarching story that has to be addressed and continue to be covered and called out. I guess in 2013, 2014, I was able to have more time to do stories about journalism controversies, um, debates within you know, newsrooms, which I'm still fascinated by. But when you've got a hate movement against the media and a raging pandemic, you know, those, those sorts of issues are going to, are going to come more front and center. Oh, okay. Wow. This guy is just a master of misdirection. Stelter is of course unreliable. Just look at this article that he wrote in 2009 about Obama's war on Fox news. He quotes Obama describing Fox news as quote, part of the political opposition, a position that Brian Stelter currently takes. His article does little more than echo and bolster the Obama administration's complaints about Fox, such as you'd be hard pressed if you watched watched an entire day to find a positive story about me on that front. Ugh, I never claim to have a good Obama impersonation. Just look at how he pathetically tries to defend Obama against the charge that he attacked Fox News for most of his presidency, which he did. Yes, this was a complete failure at every step of the process during this entire campaign. The media definitely, they, they clearly and overtly and even told us that they wanted Hillary to win and they gambled everything including their credibility on defeating Donald Trump and electing Hillary Clinton, and they lost. Just because we may like President Obama, we might forget that he spent much of his presidency attacking Fox News. Bill Clinton attacked right He did not spend much of his presidency attacking Fox News. He occasionally pointed out what he believed was unfair coverage from Fox. Okay, I guess what maybe you need to realize is that for a lot of people who don't share your political opinions, that's what it feels like. What you're going through right now is what it felt like for the last eight years. Remember that article I showed you that Tater wrote in 2009 about Obama's attacks on Fox News? Oh, would you look at this? As late as 2016, Obama was still complaining about Fox News, the only media outlet that was ever critical of the Obama administration. I want to move into more of a broader discussion about cable news. And I've watched a lot of it on, on all three of the major networks. And I would argue that when you watch cable news, you don't actually learn as much as you would if you watch like what are the network shows, if you watch the nightly news or morning show. And a lot of it is moved into more opinion-based shows. Um, do you think, would you agree with that assertion that 
you could probably learn more of what's going on in the news from either reading the newspaper or watching maybe the nightly news? Well, I think it depends on what program you're talking about. I think cable news is too broad a brush uh, for yeah. a conversation about, um, about like what, you know, what the, the, the amount of content, the amount of information. There are some cable news shows that are almost purely entertainment. Uh, talk shows that only bring on one side, um, you know, ranting and raving about made-up controversies. I'm confused. Is he talking about himself and CNN? Is he talking about MSNBC? When do either of these networks, or the rest of the mainstream media for that matter, ever bring on opposing points of view? It's increasingly rare, and I can't think of a time in recent memory that Brian Stelter has brought on opposing points of view. So, I don't know, maybe he's just doing some kind of self-reflection here. After all, CNN just got sued for millions of dollars for manufacturing a story that targeted innocent kids who were actually the victims simply because one of them was wearing a MAGA hat. Then there was that time you promoted Jesse Smollett's fake hate crime story, again, because it involved MAGA hats. Or, I don't know, how about the last four years of you claiming Trump is a Russian agent who was colluding with Russia? That didn't exactly turn out the way Reliable Stelter said it would. So, yeah, he must be talking about himself and CNN. Wow, I mean, I'm really surprised. Good for you, Brian. Of course, I'm talking about Fox when I say that. Of course, the one channel that was pushing back against all these fake stories being reported by CNN. Uh, talk shows that only bring on one side, um, you know, ranting and raving about made up controversies. And of course, I'm talking about Fox when I say that. Uh, there are cable news shows that interview newsmakers and world leaders. Do you think CNN does that too? Uh, well, what shows are you talking about? Um, I think at, at times you, you do have some very opinion-based shows at nighttime like you do on Fox. So which ones? Uh, I would argue probably Como Prime Time, Don Lemon. Those are, I wouldn't say those are more new. I, I would say a lot of those are opinion-based shows. Would you agree? Uh, I think those are newscasts that have opinionated voices on them. Okay, this is where I really start wanting to smack Stelter in his fat potato face. This kid just called out what anyone watching was thinking, that Stelter is laying the bullshit on thick. And what's Stelter's response? To defensively turn it around on the kid and demand, what shows? What shows? All of them! But like the kid specifically asked about, the evening shows. It's hard to believe, but Stelter's actually trying to intimidate this kid for asking him a tough probing question. An obvious question, but one that is potentially dangerous to Stelter's diatribe. So now he has to try and discredit the kid by implying that his suggestion is somehow absurd. Sometimes people think about when they say, oh, CNN has more point of view, CNN has more opinion now. They're talking about the monologues that the anchors are doing. Is that some of what you're referring to, like the essays that the anchors are doing? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think the, the essays are like one of the big changes about CNN in the Trump years. And I think that they are a necessary um, addition. What the fuck is he even talking about? For fuck's sake. This guy is such a scummy, slimy, snake oil car salesman. Talk about spin. Oh no, this is not an opinion show. Just a new show with people who are opinionated. That's the same thing, Tater. You're just calling it a new show because you think we're all a bunch of drooling mongoloids who can't see through your asinine rationalizations. All in all, it was a pretty good interview by Raging Ryan. I commend him for reaching out to CNN and actually getting the interview. I definitely recommend recommend everybody go over and check out his channel. I'll put a link to it in the description and the pinned comment. Also, before we go, I wanted to remind everybody that tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern, we will be having a live Discord chat stream. So if you want to join in, simply join my Discord. And if you join the live voice channel, you'll be able to participate in the discussion with us. That's all I have for this episode. Please hit that like button, share, and subscribe. It's one of the best ways you can support this channel. The best way you can support this channel is by supporting the sponsors that keep us going. Or if you want to send a donation, you can do so on one of the platforms listed in the description or pinned comment. Thanks for watching. Keep coming back.